Hello dear algorithm traders. Today's video is about workstation requirements, why the tones are four times faster than the charts about neuroscience in brain research, and even about body language. Today, I will show and prove to you exactly why the knowledge of these things is crucial for algorithmic trading. Here you can see how my workplace has changed over the past few years. These last years have been characterized by permanent optimization. Over time, there were more and more screens and the size also changed. At the same time, this development placed higher demands on hardware such as processors, graphics cards, RAM and hard drives. I was never completely satisfied with my workplace. Satisfaction means standing still and standing still is a step backwards in retail. If all our ancestors had always been satisfied, we would still be sitting in caves in front of an open fire today and holding pieces of meat impaled on a branch into the fire. Interestingly, innovation never comes from those who are satisfied. The markets in which we work are changing at such a rapid rate that it is impossible for many traders to follow this progress on a daily basis. Half a year ago my filter. Settings for the stock market data increased so much that my workstation was regularly overloaded. The temperatures of the CPU sometimes rose to 75 to 80 degrees Celsius. In very volatile phases, the data stalled, which made a decision difficult. Most stock market traders may have 5 to 10 different charts open and use a maximum of 30 different filter settings. I use up to 90 different charts with over 1,000 filter settings. It was clear that the performance had to suffer as a result. A fast CPU alone is not enough. It is crucial to optimally coordinate the individual components such as CPU, mainboard, cooler, hard drives and graphics cards. I dealt with that very intensively six months ago. With many comparisons on the internet and in specialist magazines, I put together my first individual trading PC. This time I switched to an AMD processor because the Intel processors get very hot. In addition, I use a maintenance-free CPU water cooling and six internal fans. The RTX 2070 Super Graphics card is enough because I don't use video games. The hard disks are extreme with a read speed of up to 7000 megabytes slash s and an access time of 0.01 seconds. The color of the fans immediately shows me the CPU temperature range. From the point of view of a computer professional, this compilation could certainly have been optimized, but I would also like to know my way around this area to be independent. And that's how I learned from my mistakes. The first benchmark test was very promising. Point A shows the results of my new workstation at CPU. Benchmark you can test your workstation yourself for free. I also received my fiber optic cable at the same time. A 1000 mit slash S line would be completely oversized for retail, a 500 mit line would not have been necessary either, but my main concern is the ping values. Over the years I have optimized my ping values more and more, and now I have a ping value of 4 to 5. Of course, this always depends on how the respective broker's servers can be addressed, but the speed is definitely noticeable. Out of 750 high-end processors, I currently have one of the fastest CPUs with the best price. Performance Ratio The CPU benchmark is now over 33,000, previously it was 14,000. The benchmark in the graphics card area has also improved from 10,000 to 18,000. It is extremely in the hard disk area. Although I have already worked with a Samsung SSD before, the value has now improved from 4,000 to over 32,000. The reading speed with the new fourth generation Western Digital Black is 14 times faster than the Samsung Evo. It's not about being in first place in all areas, but about achieving the best price performance ratio. I could have bought an equivalent CPU, but it would have cost 12 times more. The main memory only plays a subordinate role in these components. If you enter in Google, Passmark CPU, you will find your personal benchmark values for CPU, hard drives and graphics cards. Incidentally, this will help you to determine the best price performance ratio if you want to buy a new computer component in the near future. After the installation I started to compare my old. 
workstation with the new workstation. I used the same filter settings in the area of my stock. Exchange software and was absolutely thrilled about the huge difference. The speed of the new hard disks, due to the access time, is no longer comparable, and I noticed temperature differences of up to 30 degrees. Even in extreme, volatile phases, there was not a single attack of weakness with my new workstation. That motivates me insofar as I now have great potential to advance further complex filter settings. There is still room for improvement, and when it gets thin I will continue to upgrade. Another idea was to reduce the number of screens while increasing the total screen area. At first glance, the result is very satisfactory, although in retrospect I am a little annoyed that I did not go straight to 8K. But you still have to have goals in life. The screen resolution of 4K at 60Hz is pleasant. My graphics card still has enough power, as my stock exchange software also accesses the GPU. The reason is that arithmetic operations can be carried out much faster in the GPU than with the CPU. Five screens are much clearer than eight screens and the goal of controlling all screens with one mouse and keyboard has been achieved. One thing that I had not considered, of course, was the storage of my 200 different workspaces within my eight old screens. Since I am now working with five screens, some graphics were automatically outside the screen area. But the problem was also quickly resolved. It looks like autumn and winter will produce very interesting projects, and I'm looking forward to digging deeper into the algorithms. After that, it will only be a matter of assigning individual patterns in the algorithms to specific market situations. Individual signposts can then be created from this in order to find out where you are in the market. As we know, there are no clear patterns in terms of price, time, volume, or liquidity. The big player's algorithms are the only patterns that can be reliably identified. My screens are designed solely to identify these patterns of algorithms, so my screens seem very complicated at first glance. But if you take a closer look, you can quickly see that the whole thing is much less complicated than it initially looks. It becomes much more interesting when you can identify these patterns and derive clear trade advantages from them. I made a ping comparison of three different brokers. While it takes an average of 20 milliseconds to send a data packet with the first broker, the best broker only needs 10 milliseconds. These three comparisons are nevertheless very fast, as there are also ping times of over 200 milliseconds. The ping times depend on various influencing factors. The type of broadband technology, but also the distance between the servers, influence the latency period. A normal speed test is of relatively little use, as it addresses a server that has nothing to do with your broker. You can measure your ping time to the broker yourself with Windows. Enter Windows Start Execution and then CMD. A black screen should now appear. Now enter the following, ping google.de, this will give you the ping time to communicate with the Google server. If you enter the website of your broker, you will receive your personal ping values. My ping times in the speed test are 4 to 5 milliseconds, but I can only reach my broker in 8 to 10 milliseconds. But the trading orders with my broker in the Forex market have a decisive advantage over the futures market. There is not always liquidity in the futures market, while a market maker almost always provides me with liquidity. This means that I am usually faster in the Forex market than in the future market. If I were to trade in the Forex market exclusively in equilibrium today, all these changes would not have been necessary. But I was tired of guessing why there was a green candle. Has the euro just been bought or the dollar sold? That finally brought me to the stock market two years ago. Now we come to the general overview of my workplace. We have already discussed points F, G and H. If you look at my main chart at point A on a 24-inch monitor, the individual charts look very small. You have to note that I am working with a 75-inch 4K monitor, and a 24-inch monitor fits there nine times. Most of the charts are used to identify the algorithms, in addition to which my trading screen and the currency strength in the Forex market are located there. At point B and C there are four more 32-inch screens, which usually run with individual future data. I use around 20% of my 3 square meters screen area for 
the forex market and 80% for the future market. At point D and E there are three loudspeakers each two. Effectively display the tones I have filtered. These tones represent a crucial trading advantage, so we're going to talk about them in detail today. So far, I don't know any trader in the world who follows a similar strategy in the area of my tones. In fact, that would not be possible either, since I developed this strategy myself. One day my goal is to largely do without the chart views and only make my trading decisions based on the sounds. This means that it is theoretically possible to trade profitably only on the basis of tones without a chart image. Now many will say that I am crazy and that such a thing will never be possible. Those who talked about people walking on the moon one day in the 1950s were also pronounced insane. Ten years later the subject was settled. Perhaps we just wait ten years and then talk to each other again. You sit in front of your trading screen and wait concentrated for the right opportunity to get started. Suddenly our eyes register an opportunity, the nerves send the information to our brain, which in turn controls our hands to place the appropriate trade. We press the buy button and our computer sends the order over the internet to our broker, who opens this order for us. We are now in the market, a strong bullish candle has shot up, but we entered the market far too late. Now we see a big player pushing the price down and the price getting closer and closer to our stop loss. What should we do? Give the price a little more room and expand the stop loss, or get out now because we missed the boat. We get out and a second later, the price goes up again sharply. If we stay in, the price may be pushed into our extended stop, and we get annoyed that we didn't get out straight away. A situation that every beginner has already experienced, for some it is even a recurring deja vu. What just happened? Well, we reacted correctly, but unfortunately much too slowly. One reason for this could be too high a latency that many traders have to deal with on a daily basis. Sometimes retail traders work with latencies of 100 to 200 milliseconds, which are a major disadvantage for trading. Good ping times are around 10-20 milliseconds, which can usually only be achieved with fiber optics. Big players and high-frequency traders have long been working with microwaves, which are theoretically faster than light and achieve latencies of 1 to 2 milliseconds. These are worlds that we retail traders will never reach because the costs of this technology would devour vast sums of money. But in principle, even the big players do not have a decisive advantage from this because there is a factor that cannot be accelerated even with a latency of one millisecond, this factor is limited by our sensory stimuli. We humans perceive our environment with five senses, by which I mean the ability to see, hear, smell, feel and taste. In science, this is understood to mean entire sensory systems. With the help of the external sensory organs eyes, ears, mouth, nose and skin stimuli are registered, which are then processed in the brain. Many millions of sensory impressions are registered every day, most of them are only perceived unconsciously. Which of these five senses could theoretically be used for trading? Tasting and smelling would probably be difficult and thus fall out. Three senses remain seeing, feeling and hearing. Which sense do we mainly use for trading? The correct answer, the sense of sight, with the help of our eyes. We will now take a closer look at whether this is a good decision. The visual stimuli such as images, colors or shapes are the most important for human sensory perception. The sense of sight provides around 80% of all information from the environment that we process in the brain. It has the highest absorption capacity of all the senses, followed by the hearing and touch senses. The diverse contents, messages and associations that are associated with an image can be transported very quickly. Our visual perception is subject to weak cognitive control. In this way, key emotional stimuli can be used, which automatically force our attention. Advertising benefits significantly from this. The sense of touch, Haptic stimuli such as shapes, materials and surfaces can strongly influence product and brand perception. In combination with the sense of sight, haptic stimuli ultimately decide whether to buy a product in a car or furniture store. In the fruit and vegetable market too, haptic senses help to make the right decision. 10,000 receptors sit alone in the surface of the skin of one hand and wait for signals. In addition, human well-being arises through touch. 
Compared to seeing, hearing, smelling or tasting, the sense of touch is more of a low perception. We rely more on our eyes. The sense of hearing, acoustic stimuli include tones, sounds, melodies and rhythms that are perceived through our sense of hearing. Of all five senses, the sense of hearing is the most differentiated sense. It is far more sensitive, more precise and also more efficient than the eye. Words are processed much faster than pictures. In the same time that an image can be processed by the brain, around 6 to 10 words can be processed. Our hearing is directly linked to moods. Different tones lead to a different, emotional effect on the recipient and thus determine the behavior. Music can make us cry, the voices of people we love are calming. The different speed of reaction to different stimuli is interesting. Humans react fastest to tactile and acoustic stimuli, followed by visual stimuli. Tactile stimuli can sometimes be received faster than acoustic stimuli, but the challenge lies in the temporal resolution. This means that our sense of sight reacts the slowest to external stimuli. From the point of view of reaction speed, the sense of sight is therefore rather disadvantageous for action. With headphones you can again optimize the recording of the sound significantly, the perception is reduced to 2 milliseconds. What appears to our senses to be simultaneous must, from a physical point of view, not necessarily have happened at the same time. Optical stimulations that do not follow one another for longer than 20 to 40 milliseconds are recorded as a single stimulus. The television and cinema industry is based on this. The human brain perceives successive images as moving images from around 14 to 16 images per second. Current frame rates are between 24 and 48 frames per second, 24 to 48 hertz. Our sense of touch reacts much more sensitively with 10 to 20 milliseconds. Our sense of hearing cannot temporally resolve two acoustic stimuli that are 3 to 5 milliseconds apart, they are experienced as a sound event. If the tones are emitted into one ear via headphones, they are no longer felt in the middle of the head, but offset to the side if there is a difference of approximate 2 milliseconds. In Euro FX, 264 lots with 108 ticks, trading transactions, entered the market within one second. In the graphic you can see the individual trades and underneath, a breakdown of how many ask and bids were included in this trade. Please note that this display is one second. Let's look at a review. If 108 trades hit the market within one second, it means we have 9.2 milliseconds to identify a trade. With our eyes, however, we need at least 40 milliseconds to identify information. This means that out of the 108 ticks, we can effectively identify only 25 ticks. With special tones coming from a loudspeaker, we could identify 250 different pieces of information. With headphones and special sound programming, this value could double again. When you look at my videos, you will initially have problems telling the different tones apart. This is completely normal at the beginning, as the senses have to get used to it. It reminds me of a situation 13 years ago when I was once allowed to fly a helicopter myself. Of course there was an experienced pilot who could intervene at any time. First, the pilot took control to get the helicopter into the air. When we were in the air, I took control. That didn't work at all in the beginning because my feet and hands had to keep three dimensions in balance at the same time and I was constantly thinking about which properties should be assigned to the control stick and joystick in combination with the pedals. The pilot recommended turning my head off and just flying out of feeling. I closed my eyes and just tried to balance the helicopter with my sense of balance and intuition. After a few minutes, I was able to reasonably fly the helicopter. When switching from sight to hearing and trading, you also need a certain amount of time to get used to the new situation. Here you can see, for example, a representation that does not yet exist anywhere in the world. This is a method of identifying the strength of the limit orders. My goal is to completely relieve the sense of sight and to concentrate exclusively on the senses of hearing and touch. The sense of hearing and touch should receive different information from the cathedral and the time and sales list in order to make faster decisions. These are primarily algorithms that I have individually filtered and that are intended to address the senses of hearing and touch in different ways. I would like to advance these ideas in the next few years, but that's still a big challenge, 
because it makes certain demands on my technology. A large number of different receptors are involved in haptic perception processes. The number of receptors in the various layers of the skin alone is estimated to be between 300 and 600 million. The most common receptors include Fata Pacini corpuscles, which are extremely sensitive to vibration stimuli in the range between 40 and 300 Hz. Tones from 2 milliseconds laterally offset are received via headphones, so that up to 500 tones ticks, can be identified per second. In the times and sales list, about 3 to 5 times less best ask or best bid information comes in than ticks. This would make 100 best ask or best bid information identifiable. Since you can only distinguish perceptions from 10 milliseconds in the haptic area anyway, that would fit well. Thus, one could receive the strength of the market orders via headphones and at the same time the strength of the limit orders via vibration bracelets. The secret, however, lies in the complex filter setting within the times and sales list and the DOM. Different signals are filtered from this, which are then sent to the headphones and the wristbands. With our eyes we can only read a maximum of 25 different signals per second in the times and sales list, with our sense of touch, and our ears we can easily get to 100 signals. That is four times as much. We have two eyes, but we are only able to read 25 pieces of information per second, and not two times 25 different pieces of information. With our two ears and our two arms we can receive 400 pieces of information per second. 100 pieces of information each in the areas of market buy, market sell, limit buy and limit sell. How much information we can actually absorb with it differs from trader to trader. But theoretically that is 16 times as much information that we can take in with our ears and skin than with our eyes. This would theoretically make it possible to process a simultaneous, four-dimensional information architecture. From this point of view, there is no reasonable reason to make future trading decisions with your eyes. Let's say you had to choose a share. In the first project you get two pieces of information, in the second project you get 32 pieces of information about this share. All information is of high quality. In which project could you make the better decision? The tones I initially used were Windows tones, which had a size of 10 kilobytes and were stereo compatible. As a result, different signals are distributed on two channels, which require more memory in a high repetition frequency. In order to be able to better distinguish the tones from one another, and at the same time to relieve my CPU, I looked for faster tones. MP3 files are unsuitable for this because they require too long a playback time and are usually stereo compatible. I found a database that provides 3,400,000 different tones in WAV format free of charge. The selection of tones that achieve a playback time of a maximum of 2 milliseconds to 5 milliseconds was very small. I found a total of 30 different tones, which however, did not meet my requirements. If a sound is 2 milliseconds long, this does not necessarily mean that the total recording time of the file is 2 milliseconds. This depends on the developer's recording technique. Another challenge was to be able to clearly distinguish the two tones when they occurred at a high frequency. So I had to program different tones myself in order to achieve the best. Result The tones I am currently using are based on a WAV file with a size of 0.5 KB, 44,100 Hz, 16-bit mono. Mono is more of an advantage if you later redirect this sound to the left or right headphone channel. The tone duration is 1 millisecond and is over 100 times faster than my old Windows tones. In the last few months I have compared about 30 different sound cards via duct PCI, USB, and USB-C I. T is interesting to know that the most expensive sound card of 800 euros achieved significantly worse results than an external USB sound card that costs just 17 euros. It is also interesting that an expensive Bose system transports the sounds to the loudspeakers much more slowly than cheap Logtech loudspeakers, which are no longer built today. This shows once again that expensive does not always have to be good. Here we see my time and sell list, which only shows the market orders and in which limit orders are executed. The blue fields indicate when an equilibrium arises in the range of sizes. With a special filter of best ask and best bid, this information is passed on to a specially programmed tone. 
This specially programmed tone has the property of being completed within one millisecond. I chose a frequency range of 20 to 100 Hz, which corresponds to a lower tone, similar to a bass. I assigned this sound to the left speaker channel. I assigned a frequency range of 1000 to 2000 Hz to the right loudspeaker channel. From there, this tone must be sent to a high-quality external or internal sound card, since the sound card on the mainboard cannot normally transmit these 1 millisecond tones to the speakers correctly. Now the sound is assigned to the correct speaker channel. My software that I work with has had some errors in the output of the tones for a few weeks. Apart from me, nobody has noticed this yet, so I'm currently still working with the previous version. Although my stock exchange software works very professionally, you can tell that the developers still have to do their homework in the area of sound transmission. The latency times are still clearly too high and still have to be optimized in terms of programming. So far it has not bothered anyone, because there is no trader except me who works intensively with it. But that could certainly change after my contribution. Hippocrates a Greek doctor and founder of medicine had once said, It is from the brain, and from the brain alone, that our pleasures, joys, pains and sorrows come. We think, see and hear through the brain. As we know, the human brain is divided into an analytical, logical left brain and an emotional, creative right brain. Basically there are asymmetries in this area, not both halves of the brain are equally responsible for everything. We should take a closer look at these factors. Look closely at the dancer. Is it rotating clockwise or counterclockwise? When the dancer spins with the time, she is mainly using the right hemisphere. When the dancer turns to the left, you are mainly using the left hemisphere. What does this mean for us in detail? The left hemisphere is responsible for rational thinking. This includes the topic of language, reading, arithmetic, rational logic, rules and laws, concentration on one point, detailed analyzes, science, step-by-step, -step, details, and the feeling of time. The right hemisphere is responsible for emotional thinking. This includes, for example, the subject of body language, imagery, and intuition. Likewise, feelings, creativity, spontaneity, volatility, curiosity, play, risk, synthesis, art, dance, music as well as feeling the space. In Germany there is such a nice donkey bridge to remember the halves of the brain. The left half of the brain is ZDF, which stands for numbers, data, and facts, and on the right, ARD, everyone is talking confused. Because of a crossing of nerves, the assignment of the brain and half of the body is opposite. The left brain controls the right half of the body, and thus our rational side. The right brain controls the left half of the body, and thus our emotional side. Our brain is made up of two sides, the left and right hemispheres. In the course of development from toddler to adult, these halves of the brain specialize more and more and take on different tasks. The left hemisphere specializes in logical thinking, it also controls the perception of details and is the seat of the language center. The right hemisphere is responsible for creativity and the perception of the bigger picture. She thinks holistically and intuitively and also controls perceptions, emotions, and imagination. In left-handers, the right, creative hemisphere is more pronounced and therefore more dominant. Probably because of this, left-handed people are more likely to find themselves in creative professions. Let's go over to the stock market for a moment. When I plan to invest money in a stock, I expect that stock will increase in value. So my investment is based on a rational decision. I bought the stock for $50 and it climbs to $60 over a period of time. Suddenly the price is going down and the value of my share is getting less and less. $59, $58, $57. Panic spreads and you don't want to lose your money, that's why you get out. This exit is primarily based on an emotional decision. Logically, I would have to arrange the ask tones on the left and the bid tones on the right. Why is that logical? Because the left hemisphere corresponds to the rational side and our right hemisphere corresponds to the emotional side. As we know, the left brain controls the right half of the body, and the right brain controls the left half of the body. 
Normally one would have to assume that when someone whispers in our left ear that this information is also processed in the left brain. However, this is not the case. The information that gets into our left ear is processed in our right brain, and the information that gets into our right ear is processed by the left brain. Thus, the left ear reaches our emotional hemisphere, and the right ear our rational hemisphere. Interestingly, you also found out that when you ask someone for money or a cigarette, you should always speak into their right ear. There the probability is three times as high that he will comply with the request. The right ear reaches the rational hemisphere, which processes the question of money or a cigarette without judgment. This is exactly why I have the bid tones on the left and the ask tones on the right. So it is also advantageous that I have dealt with the human brain and body language for over 30 years. In the next few years I will deal more specifically with these tones and try to match the tones to the charts. As soon as I have optimally filtered the main settings, it would theoretically be possible that a blind person could also trade profitably with this system. Although I am even convinced that a person who is blind could act much more profitably than I would be able to. The background to this is that a blind person has significantly finer sensors in their hearing because they have to do without their eyes. So he is able to get more information out of the tones alone than I would ever be able to. Perhaps, in the next few years, I will also achieve a higher level of sensitivity in the area of my auditory senses. However, this will only be possible if you do without your eyes for the most part. The fact is that our eyes are mistaken when trading, we can rely more on our ears. And that is exactly a particularly difficult step that you first have to take as a trader. What excites me about it is that nobody has tried this project yet. What trader would be crazy enough to enter into a trade without using their eyes? In any case, I would have the courage to do so, but it will take some time. This is a very exciting project, and I am looking forward to the future discoveries and developments that this project will bring with it. Let's summarize again briefly. My developed tones are a great trading advantage as they tell me the current activities of the major market participants. Sometimes I was able to determine that the tones of the market and limit orders come in faster than the graphical representation in the times and sales list. The advantage is often only in the 10 millisecond range, but that's enough to get a better start. It has been scientifically proven that the brain can pick up and convert acoustic signals faster than optical signals. The identification of market orders via tones is 20 times more advantageous than identification with the eyes. The total reaction time to make a trading decision improves four times. In high volatile phases, the tones are used to identify the market orders before they can be seen in the times and sales list. During the entire trading day, the eyes are massively relieved because you can always hear with your ears what is happening in the market. With the tones you always have the volatility in your ear. If you deal with other things and the volatility increases, you will notice this immediately and can react more quickly. Therefore I can recommend every trader to take a closer look at these things. Resounding success is always a step from the visible known to the hidden unknown. Maybe this idea is the first step into a new future. We will see it. I wish you a successful trade. Kind regards Michael. Yeah.